The first thing that presents it itself to you is that three on two. Oh, gross. That's weird to deal with. We very seldom see that power at all, right? So that's the first thing that makes you kind of raise an eyebrow at this. But there is another part of the question that is actually not unusual at all. It's completely standard. Which part is it? One minus x squared. Yeah, it's one minus x squared. We see this all the time. And in fact, this is as easy as it gets, really. This is screaming at you, use a substitution. What substitution is going to be the most obvious one? Now, think, I could do this, right? I could go for algebra, but this 3 over 2 is still going to present me problems because when I then do my reverse chain rule, I'm going to have a derivative of minus 2x, negative 2x for that, and it's like, where is he? He's not there. What else could I try? Yeah, I want to go for some trig substitution because if I have 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cos squared, either of those can be used, they simplify out because of the Pythagorean agent. So, be that I can take either path, bless you. I'm going to go for um, any suggested sine theta. So let's do it, okay? If x equals sine theta, that will help me start to um, change what's happening here in the function itself. But I have two other things to change in this question. What are they? Okay, number one, the boundaries. Number two, yeah, the actual variable of integration. So let's do both of those, okay? Uh, it's pretty easy to do du, sorry, dx on du here which is cos. Is that in the form that I want it to be to change my variable of integration? Oh, no, you can move it. It's not. I actually want the dx to be... Uh, sorry, d theta. I want the dx to be on the denominator, don't I? Don't because I want it to cancel with this dx, yeah? So therefore, I'm just going to divide both sides by dx on d theta, which leaves me with this. Uh, d theta on dx. Okay, yep. That'll take care of the variable of integration. What about the boundaries? What am I going to do there? When x equals 0, that implies that uh, sine theta is equal to 0. Okay. So if I take sine inverse of both of those, I'm going to get theta equals 0. Yeah. And when x equals a half, I'm going to say theta will be... Yep. Now, just pause for a moment, because this is important. We've noticed this before. This is not the only solution of this, correct? We just did general solution. There are infinitely many solutions, okay? So why did I choose, why did I choose zero? There's an obvious reason and a not obvious reason. I mean, the obvious reason is it's the first solution, and it's easy. Why wouldn't you choose zero if you can avoid it, right? Uh, if, you can, if you can use it, right? Um, but then when you have a look at this, like, but how do I justify that? How do I know that that's the value that it will do it for me? I've got actually a restriction that's implied here, right? I have to bring a restriction in. What restriction am I going to have on theta? It's between, uh, between one. Now, think carefully, think carefully. I actually noticed that the original question also has a restriction, right? It has a restriction on that variable, which is one, two, negative one. x is between negative 1 and 1. Yeah, negative 1 and 1. I do notice it's x squared, right? So therefore, I'm just going to get all the positive values. The negative 1 to 0 part actually is not that important. Um, but I have to keep it in mind. So if I have, actually, I should do the x one first. If I have this restriction here, right? That implies a restriction of negative pi on 2 um, to pi on 2, right? Is that okay? Because if I want, if you like say, oh, I want to try out uh, minus, seven, minus 0 0.7 or something like that. Well, I can find a theta within this range, sorry, within this domain that will give me that desired value for this. <coughs> okay. Sorry, sir. I yes. Because if I put any value outside of that, this is going to have a number that's negative underneath a square root. Yeah, which I don't want. What is the square root? It's there. See it? The square root is implied. I could write it as um, 1 minus x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared. But um, that half power there implies it to me. Okay. Now, it is worth noting as well, um, if this is a restriction on an x, I actually don't have any x's just by themselves. I have an x squared. So I could say this. Do you agree with that? Is that okay? 
um, which actually means for me, if all I need is from 0 to 1, if I wanted to, I could say this. I could restrict it, restrict it even further, which might be nice to me. I might want that. Okay. But anyway, all of that to justify, yeah, cool, these values are all right. They might be important for me when I'm doing um, evaluating absolute values over here. So let's now start to march through. Have I got all the pieces I have? I need? Let's do it. So I'm going to change. Oh, yeah? Question, why can't x squared be zero? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, it can. It can. You got quite right. Yes, of course. Because zero is really, yeah, I just forgot. So zero is in that domain. So therefore, that implies this. That's right. Yeah. Which is here. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. Exactly. I kind of need that value. All right. Great. We've got some new boundaries now. So I'm going to go from naught to pi on six. Okay. What have I got here? I need that. Um, I'm going to change the variable integration. So here comes a cos theta d theta on dx. Yep. That's divided by, what have I got? Sorry, that's not the square root. What have I got on my denominator? This is 1 minus sine squared theta to the power of 3 on 2. And then there's the dx that was there before, which now cancels. Okay? Now, originally we were thinking about using a reverse chain rule as a substitution of 1 minus x squared, and we thought, oh, it's a bit icky because I'll need here, at this point, I'll have a minus 2x, and I'm like, where's it going to come from, right? Now, it seems like we've got a similar problem with cos theta, except there is a place that it comes from. Because you look here, and there's going to be some significant cancelling that happens, right? All right, let's, let's work this through. I'm still from 0 to pi on 6. I've got the cos theta on the numerator. What am I going to get? Am I denying it? Yeah, so this is cos squared, right? And then you raise it to the power of 3 on 2. So 2 times 3 on 2 is 3. Yeah. And then I'm integrating with respect to theta. Everything's looking good now. You can actually see this will be even nicer because this will be 1 on cos squared, which is sec squared. And now, now this question has been written in trivia. Okay, so we'll just finish it off. Uh, tan theta from 0 to pi on 6 when you evaluate it. 1 on root 3. That's geese. Okay, do so you happy with that? Um, keep on, keep on thinking about like, even when you see some weirdo looking power like that, think about, think of trig when you see that 1 minus x squared or 4 minus x squared or anything like that.